Merry Christmas, everyone. It's almost here. That's right. We're just a few days away from the big day, and I'm very excited. Me too. I and can feel it from you. Yeah, I can feel right, it right uh, now. Today, we are lighting the angel's candle, the fourth candle. And if you know the Christmas story, angels were all about singing, a lot of songs. In fact, Christmas is kind of a season of songs, right? So True. Do you have favorite Christmas songs? Jay? Yeah. Are we talking like Jesus Christmas or like non-Jesus Christmas songs? Mm, well... I'll take any. Yeah, okay. Well, Jesus Christmas song, probably O Holy Night. Mm -hmm. And then non-Jesus Christmas song, probably 12 Days of Christmas. Okay. Those yeah. are pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about you? I like Joy to the World. It's a good song. Yeah, it's a lot it's of peppy. good lyrics in there. Um, I also quite enjoy Casey Musgrave's Christmas album. Whoa. Yeah. So. All right. Just... Bearing my soul here. Should we uh, sing a song together? Okay. You want to do that? Sure. Which one? Let's do O Holy Night. It's got okay, like ready? really good high parts okay. and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Oh, holy night. The stars are brightly shining. This has gone south fast. Josh Groban makes that look so easy. <laughs> so who are we hearing from today? Singers? Not no. Singer. Okay. Actually... If they did a duet, I would buy that Christmas album. Today, we're going to hear from Larry Schmidt, who is one of the elders serving here at Radiant Church, and Alexa Sierra, who's on staff here at church. I can't wait. Maybe they'll sing. Good morning. I'm Alexa Sierra. And I'm Larry Schmidt, and we're excited to share the Advent candle of the Angel's Candle today. As we light the Angel's Candle, we're going to focus on the miraculous and supernatural birth of Jesus that this was a birth like no other. And when we humans announce our children's birth, we'll send a card in the mail or a text or maybe even a phone call. But when the Lord decided to announce the birth of Jesus, he sent multitudes of heavenly hosts of angels in the sky to announce to the shepherds that Jesus was to come. In Psalms 19.1, it says that the heavens declare the glory of God and the skies proclaim his handiwork. I can just imagine the, the angels and the host of heavens getting excited when God told them what they were going to get to do. Luke 1, 26 to 38 tells the story of the mighty miracle of God, of him sending down his son to be the savior of the world. So Luke 1, 26 to 38. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who, has, who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. I'll pick up the story in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 15. It says, There were shepherds living in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. The angel of the Lord peered to them, and in the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news, and it will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared to the angel, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those to whom he has favor rest. 
the angels had left them and had gone into heaven and the shepherds said to the one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. In verse 10, it was talking about that this message was gonna bring great joy. And you've got a story, Alexa, that's really cool about uh, the joy that that message brought to you. Yeah, I just wanted to share um, a testimony that's really close to my heart. Um, just of receiving good news, miraculous news even. Um, it was this past June um, that my uncle's leukemia came back and he was getting really sick really fast. And um, we had gotten the call one morning that we needed to rush over to the hospital to be with him for his last moments. And um, Unfortunately, we didn't, we didn't make it to be with him at that time. He had, had stayed in the hospital in Fresno, um, and I was just really troubled at the, at the thought of him passing away and, and not accepting the Lord as his Savior. And my heart was aching um, from, from the days that he had passed away um, until his funeral. And at his funeral, I had met his half-sister, who I have never, I'm not related to her, we've never met before, and she ended up telling me that a week before my uncle had passed away, they were talking on the phone, and she felt this, she was a Christian, she had felt this urgency in her heart to preach the gospel to him and to invite him to give his life to the Lord, and he did. He said yes to Christ, and the Lord has told me that he's with him, and it was, it was indeed news that brought such great joy and relief to my heart. I'm sure, like, just like the shepherds, when they heard that a Savior had come into the world, the long-awaited Messiah had finally come, just the relief that came to their hearts, and I got to experience that when I heard the words that my uncle was with was with my Lord in heaven and mm. his Lord too. And I just wanted to encourage you, you who's watching, that you would keep contending for your families and for your own lives, uh, just for the faithfulness of God, yeah. that you would keep waiting because it will come just like our Lord. He yeah. did come and he did not delay. And your miracle will come. Yeah. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you for the way that you brought your son into the world, that it was uh, to the lowly, you announced it to the shepherds, and you used the host of heaven to do that, Lord, and that you're still doing that today. You're still wanting to reveal yourself through angels, through dreams, and we just pray that for each of these people that are watching today and just here, we just pray, Lord, that you would come in a powerful way and minister to those people that are in their families or friends that they have uh, a heart, a burden to see saved, Lord. Would you come to them in a powerful way and give them the good news? And we just thank you for this time in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As we light the angel's candle, will you join us with the declaration on the screen? Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is, is the light, light of the world. world. The, the light, light no, no darkness, darkness can, can overcome. overcome. Merry Christmas! Radiant Church, it is the week. It is the week of our dear Savior's birth. There is no uh, service this morning, um, but I want to share a few things with you and make a few announcements. The first is that our Christmas Eve service is going to happen right here in the Radiant parking lot. It'll start at 4.30, it'll end at 5.30, it'll start in the light, it'll end in the dark, kind of like 2020, start with so much promise, vision, and then fade to black. Uh, but we still have reason to sing. We're going to look to and lift up Jesus, who is the light of the world. Our King has come and he will come again so we'll gather to him here in this parking lot it's going to be cold 
So uh, dress warm, uh, bundle up. Also, I've been asked, um, can we tailgate? And the answer is no. We're gonna need every bit of space in this parking lot for people. Uh, there will be hundreds of people gathered in this uh, parking lot. So if you're sick, stay home. Uh, if you feel like just reluctant, nervous, you don't have a clear conscience about gathering uh, with people, we totally understand. And there is no pressure to be with us. We bless you. We hope that you have a really happy holiday with family uh, and friends. And we will see you someday soon. But for those who are saying, yeah, this is something I want to do, then we'll see you at Christmas Eve right here in the parking lot. So the million dollar question for anyone who goes to Radiant um, is what's next or when will we gather? Um, as many of you know, we've been gathering in homes for the last 10 weeks and what we've called house to house. And that season's been a really a huge win for us as a church. Um, I'm celebrating a number of things, but yeah, here's just a few things that come to mind. I'm celebrating as we gathered in homes almost 400 people who attended one of our house to house gatherings. I'm uh, celebrating new people uh, being added, like your neighbors now come to our church. I'm meeting people uh, who tell me, I, I, don't, I don't know them and they're saying, well, I go to Radiant and they've never been to Radiant. They've never been to the building, they've never been to a service, but they've been to your home. And I'm so excited that somehow in all of this, we're adding people to the church. I'm, I'm celebrating the participation and the engagement. I think it was a season where it could have been easy for people to withdraw or step back for really legitimate reasons. And people stepped forward and there's new voices that have emerged, new worship leaders, uh, new preachers, new connections, new friendships. And I'm celebrating that people stepped up. I'm celebrating actually the, um, I guess just the steps of obedience. Um, it was a pretty beautiful thing for me to watch couples kind of pray and obey, even if it was going to be awkward, even if they didn't know what to expect, they stepped out and they risked. And I think that moved God's heart. I think it honored him. Um, I'm celebrating Glenn Power, uh, who provided us each week with sermon notes. He made us look more spiritual and smarter than we really are. And because of his gift, it was many voices, but it was one message. So everyone was preaching the same thing just in their voice um, and with their illustrations. So that was a beautiful thing. Celebrating our kids being involved. Uh, that was huge for us. And celebrating hundreds of scriptures that were committed to memory uh, during a time when our thoughts were running amok. Um, so those are just some of the things that I saw. And I, I wasn't at your house gathering. So that season was a real win for us and the question is uh what's next and i'm pretty excited to announce um that it seems good to us and seems good to the holy spirit that we gather again as a church here at the church well let's get away from a little bit of the noise so i want to uh, speak just a little bit to the process like how we came to this uh decision and it really was through hours of conversation as leaders and then hours of conversation with radiant members and hours of conversation with medical workers with doctors and nurses asking for input and uh, not to pull the god card but hours of conversation with god uh, we've spent hours in prayer seeking god on this decision um yeah, because it really feels like one of those moments where it's kind of cloud by day, fire by night, um, where we're kind of daily looking to Jesus as his church, asking him to lead us uh, forward, because uh, we've uh, certainly all walked off our maps at this point. Um, so that's kind of how we uh, came to the decision. Um, we're not doing this because our house churches didn't work. Um, in fact, that's a way of meeting and that we're gonna use again in the future. That's like an ingredient that we're gonna cook with um, from here on out. Um, we didn't come to this decision um, because there's no uh, risk in gathering. Like the coast is clear, it's over, let's all get together. 
um, that that's certainly not where we're at. There's risk in gathering. We understand that. We just feel like the risk of not gathering is greater than the risk of gathering. And that's just where we're at right now. So obviously, you know, I think a question that comes up for you is what will the services look like when we gather? You've probably gone to one, you know, before COVID. What will it look like after COVID? And here's a few things that we do know. We will get to you with more specifics after the holiday of how a service will look so that you know what to expect. Um, but we do know that the services uh, will be shorter. They'll be about an hour, kind of like our online service. We do know that they're gonna be smaller. We have no desire to pack everybody up and in. Um, we do know that our kids uh, will be with us during the service. There will be no kids work or place to drop off your kids. And I do know with certainty um, that the service will probably not look exactly how you want it to look. I can almost guarantee it. Believe it or not, um, some people don't think the way you think about this. Believe it or not, not everyone feels the way you feel about this. And so just plan on these services not going according uh, to your plan or maybe even my plan. And, and I think we're going to be good. Uh, plan on preferring other people and plan on giving up lesser things uh, in order to lift up Jesus. And I think we're going to be all right. The services may be too short for some. They may be too long for others. Um, it might be too loose for some. Um, it might be too rigid for others. Um, yeah, like I said, not everyone is in the same spot. Some people are more worried than you are. Um, and some people are less concerned than you are about this. And so as we step forward, know that it's going to be a huge blessing, like a huge blessing to see people. Um, and then you will be annoyed by those very same people because church is family. And when we sit down to a meal together, um, not everyone gets a custom order. Yeah. So there's something more important about being uh, together. So um, other other questions, I think, is uh, what time will the services be? And, and that depends on really um, how many services we have. So we will have between two and four services on a Sunday morning of around 150 people. That's what we feel uh, comfortable with. So depending on the need, um, we will have between two and four services and that will determine the times of the services on a Sunday uh, morning. Um, I think another question that probably is coming up is, will there still be something online? For those of us um, who feel uncomfortable uh, being together, is there still something that's going to come out each Sunday? And the answer is yes. We'll still provide something online so that you can stay in step. We still very much consider you uh, a part of the church. It's not like, well, those with lesser faith, you can stay home. No, we understand that there's good reasons to stay home and we'll look to provide and keep you connected just like we have for the last 10 months. Um, yeah, at this point, we're planning on um, having, it just so happens that we removed the playground not too long ago, uh, which means that we have tons of space to meet outside and inside. So we're planning on gathering inside and outside, again, depending on how many people want to come to each uh, service. So it's kind of providential that we got rid of the playground. Uh, too many kids were getting hurt on it, so it got removed. And, and now we know we need that uh, space. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, to gather on January 17th here. Uh, I'm excited about corporate worship, man. Excited to lift our voices together. I'm excited about the sermon series we've got cooking. I'm excited to gather and open the word. I, I don't know about you, but in this time of trouble and hardship, um, the word of God's just popping off the page. So many things are so relevant. Uh, there's so many directions we could go. I'm so excited about the sermon series. And then I'm just excited about the new year. 
And I know that 2020, 2021 has trouble. Um, I know it's not the end, but I'm excited about kind of our God um, and the way he's able to redeem and use our pain. He doesn't waste our pain. He's up to something in this. And as we wander kind of in this God appointed wilderness, I'm excited about what he's doing uh, and what this sifting that's going on um, in our church right now. So anyway, um, I love you guys. I hope to see you on Christmas Eve. Um, if not, hopefully in the new year. Um, and I'll, uh, I, I, yeah, I guess I said that already. I'll see you soon.